Say you started your CA journey and your father asked you, you know, how long will you take to become a chartered accountant? You said five years. And your father said, okay, if you become a chartered accountant in the next five years, then I will give you a car. So that your father gave you two options. Option number one, every year he will deposit one lakh into a fixed deposit account with a bank, right? So first year, second year, third year, fourth year and fifth year, he will deposit one lakh each, right? And the bank will give some interest on that fixed deposit. Whatever is the amount available in those fixed deposit accounts at the end of year five when you become a chartered accountant, you can take that amount and purchase a car of your choice. That is one option. The second option that your father gave was you decide the model of the car today itself. Not that you can decide on Mercedes, okay? So something around 5-6 lakhs of range, you decide the model of the car today. And at the end of the fifth year, whatever is the amount that is needed to pay for that car, I will pay that amount. That is what your father told. In the first scenario, what was your father's liability? Every year he'll contribute 1 lakh or every year he'll deposit 1 lakh. Whatever is the risk, the risk that you know the bank will pay lower interest or the car's prices have gone, gone up substantially in the market. Even then, you are at risk. Your father is not at risk. Okay, this kind of plans are called defined contribution plan. What is the other plan? Define the benefit plan. Here, the benefit that you will get, what is the benefit? The car, that itself is defined. So, at the end of five years, let us say for increase in, you know, raw material prices, or shortage of chips and semiconductors, whatever the reason be, the price of the car went from 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs. Now, at the end of five years, your father has to pay 10 lakhs and value the car once you become a chartered accountant. To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. Let us now understand post-employment benefits. What are post-employment benefits? We have already seen the definition. Post-employment benefits are the benefits which are payable after the completion of employment. Now, don't take this notion that completion of employment means only retirement. No, it, it not only means retirement, it also means resignation. Okay. So, whatever are the benefits which are payable at the time of resignation or retirement is covered under post-employment benefits. But Something which is payable because of termination, something like VRS that is outside the scope of post-employment benefit, that is a part of termination benefit which we will be discussing separately. Now, what could be the examples of post-employment benefit? Say someone has worked in an organization till the age of retirement. At the time of retirement, he may be entitled to gratuity you know, for the years that he has put into service. Then he will be entitled to pension. So that is a form of post-employment benefit because pension will be paid only after retirement, right? So that whatever is paid after retirement as pension, that is a post-employment benefit. Sometimes the organization may give an option of lump sum payment instead of pension. We something we understand as commuting of pension. That is a post-employment benefit. Then apart from these, you know, gratuity pensions, employers may also provide some form of benefits like post-employment healthcare. So, even after retirement from the organization, if there are any medical costs associated for treatment of employee or dependents based on some conditions, they may provide healthcare services or they may provide healthcare facilities or they may reimburse the cost of medical expenses. Some form of benefits, whether monetary or non-monetary, to which the employees, employee is entitled to after the completion of employment, right? So, whatever are the benefits that are payable to the employee after the completion of employment is what is called post-employment benefit. Now, here the accounting for this post-employment benefit becomes both challenging as well as complex because say an employee has put in services for 30 years and at the end of 30 years you are paying him gratuity. Why are you paying him gratuity? Because he worked in the organization for 30 years. The lump sum payment is happening at the end of 30 years. Let us say 15 days salary works out to 1 lakh rupees for that employee. For 30 years, the gratuity amount comes to 30 lakhs. When are we paying that 30 lakhs? At the time of his retirement. Why are we paying? Because he served the organization for 30 years. So, don't you think that expenses should be booked in each of the year in which the employee has completed his service? Because the gratuity is a function of the employee working in the organization for some number of years and based on the last run salary, we are paying him gratuity. Now, why does the accounting become complex? First, whatever you are paying at the end of 30 years is a future value. You have to discount that and arrive at what is the present value. Now, it is not present value for one year. How much of that 30 lakhs is attributable to each of the years that has to be calculated? That is the first thing. Second thing, today, how will I know what will be the employee salary after 30 years? I don't even know what will be the salary after 5 years. So, how do I estimate salary after 30 years? So, that is another challenge. The inflation rates may go up, inflation rates may come down, based on that the salary may change. Another problem is, how will I know how many employees will work in the organization till their retirement or how many employees will resign, let us say, after 7 years, after 10 years or how many employees will resign, let us say, after 3 years. How will I make that estimate? Because if someone is resigning in 3 years time, then I don't need to pay him gratuity. But if someone is resigning after 10 years, I need to pay him gratuity. And I don't know who will work with me till 3 years or 5 years or 10 years or till the time of retirement. 
so that estimation becomes a challenge and also as the organization grows they may have more and more number of employees again you have to estimate for them or in some cases some employees may die during service at that point in time some other benefit has to be paid so there are a lot of complexities involved in estimating the expense and the liability part for post employment benefits see if it is a short term thing if it is something like bonus i know last year i paid bonus of 1 lakh i'll add maybe 10% and i'll make a provision okay but something which i have to pay after 30 years how will i estimate it today or think of a case where post retirement medical benefit is being provided now if some someone may live till the age of 60 years someone may live till the age of 70 years 80 years 80 years 100 years how will i estimate the medical expenses related cost also if the pension has to be paid for how many years will the pension be paid accordingly i have to make a provision right so because of all of these variables because of all of these estimations accounting for post employment benefit plan becomes both complex as well as challenging now we as chartered accountants are not experts in estimating all of these things okay so don't think that we will have to make the estimate we will take the help of a professional called actuary so he is that actuary is another expert who deals with all of these kind of assumptions so basically the actuary will study the actuary will study the past pattern actuary will make certain assumptions actuary will understand the organization the composition of employees and based on that they will make certain assumptions so they will say on an average the employee remaining service life will be let us say 12 years on an average this percentage of employee will resign every year on an average this will be the salary growth over a period of time based on inflation rate on an average this will be the interest income that you can earn on investment or this will be the interest expense or this will be the interest factor which you have to consider to discount the future payments all of these assumptions are made by someone called an actuary okay so you don't need to worry about that you know you will have to sit and make those assumptions you will get an actuarial report based on that you will have to recognize a liability now you might be wondering sir if there is an actuary who is doing all of the complex activity of estimating and all of that then why is it complex in accounting it is complex in accounting because there are a lot of elements involved in this post employment benefit as we learn about these elements we'll get a clarity as to how do we account for each one of them let us now understand the types of post employment benefit plans now friends there are two types of post employment benefit plan first one is a defined contribution plan the second one is a defined benefit plan now for this let me give you a general example then we'll come to specific aspect of employer and employee say you started your ca journey and your father asked you you know how long will you take to become a chartered accountant you said 5 years and your father said okay if you become a chartered accountant in the next 5 years then i will gift you a car for that your father gave you two options option number 1 every year he will deposit 1 lakh into a fixed deposit account with a bank right so first year second year third year fourth year and fifth year he will deposit 1 lakh each right and the bank will give some interest on that fixed deposit whatever is the amount available in those fixed deposit accounts at the end of year 5 when you become a chartered accountant you can take that amount and purchase a car of your choice that is one option the second option that your father gave was you decide the model of the car today itself not that you can decide on mercedes okay so something around 5 6 lakhs of range you decide the model of the car today and at the end of the fifth year whatever is the amount that is needed to pay for that car i will pay that amount that is what your father told so in the first case he said i'll keep on depositing 1 lakh every year and at the end of the fifth year whatever is that amount you take that amount and buy the car what if that amount is not sufficient then you will have to pay out of your own pocket and purchase the car in the second option your father said decide on the model today now don't say that you know sir in 5 years if the model is not available what we will do generally a model of a car you know runs for about 10 to 15 years so don't get into that right today you decide the model at the end of 5 years your father will buy the car for you now think of these two scenarios in the first scenario what was your father's liability every year he will contribute 1 lakh or every year he will deposit 1 lakh apart from that he is not bothered about how much will be the interest whether the bank will pay 7% interest 6% interest interest rate falls interest rate rises all of those things your father is not bothered about who is bothered about that you are bothered about that because you are taking those risk if the interest rate fall the amount that you will receive at the end of fifth year will be lower let us say you know price of the car rises a lot then also you are at risk right so your father's liability was restricted to the contribution he was making to the deposit account apart from that he does not carry any further liability whatever is the risk the risk that you know the bank will pay lower interest or 
the cars prices have gone gone up substantially in the market even then you are at risk your father is not at risk okay this kind of plans are called defined contribution plan why defined contribution plan the contribution that your father has to make is defined okay the contribution that your father has to make is defined apart from that your father does not bear any further responsibility any further liability liability the interest rate risk the investment risk everything else is borne by you okay that is called a defined contribution plan now i gave you an example of bank assume for a moment that 1 lakh rupees was being invested in a mutual fund then if the market crashes you will be at risk if the market crashes you will be at risk because the value of investments may fall down right that is a defined contribution plan what is the other plan defined benefit plan here the benefit that you will get what is the benefit the car that itself is defined so at the end of 5 years let us say for increase in you know raw material prices so shortage of chips and semiconductors whatever the reason be the price of the car went from 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs now at the end of 5 years your father has to pay 10 lakhs and buy you the car once you become a chartered accountant there the benefit is defined who is taking the risk there your father is taking the risk you are not taking risk because you will anyways get the car of your choice your father is taking the risk say for example the sales tax is increased or say for example the road tax is increased all those risks are with your father because there the benefit which will be given to you is defined that is called a defined benefit plan let's now take examples to understand defined contribution plan and defined benefit plan right as far as defined contribution plan is concerned the best example is a provident fund contribution now if you recollect your income tax provisions which you have learnt in ca inter then you would know that there is an employer there is an employee and there is there is something called a fund right we can call it a provident fund right and that fund can be internally managed it can be you know the government fund whatever it is there is a fund now what the employer does the employer contributes 12% of the salary of the employee to the provident fund right now there are some limits you know uh, there are some limits there are some thresholds and all of that we'll not get into all of those things let us say the salary of the employee is employee is 10000 12% of 10000 is contributed by employer to this fund every month 12% of the salary which comes to 1200 now once the employer contributes the amount to the fund then employer is not required to contribute anything over and above that in the future to meet the payments from the fund to the employee say the employee retires at the time of retirement who will settle the benefit to the employee the fund will settle the benefit to the employee so whatever is the amount that the employer contributes to the fund the fund would invest that in some government security some portion maybe small portion in stock market some portion in some you know good quality corporate bonds based on the existing rules and regulations they will invest those amounts then once they invest those amounts they will earn certain return those returns are added to the investments and ultimately at the time of retirement or at the time of withdrawal the fund will pay the amount to the employee now in india the amount of return that is paid from the fund to the employee is determined by the government the government says every year okay the interest will be 8% 8.5% 9% that rate is decided by the government okay so once the government says okay this year the provident fund will make a payment of 8% or 8.5% whatever is that whatever is the amount right now the obligation to settle the benefit to the employee is on the fund and not on the employer employer is like once i have contributed 12% i don't i don't care at all right it is the fund's responsibility to make the payment to the employee right this is called a defined contribution plan where the employer contribution to the benefit plan is defined where the employer contribution to the benefit plan is defined the final benefit is not defined the final benefit depends on how much will the fund earn as a return and then finally it will settle it to the employee but contribution by the employer is defined let us say because of some reason the fund does not have sufficient amount to pay to the employees does the employer has any liability the employer does not carry any liability because employer says i have contributed 12% what is required as per law after over and above that i am not required to make any kind of payment these kind of plans are called defined contribution plans where the contribution by the employer is defined let us now understand an example of a defined benefit plan and the best example that fits here is a gratuity payment what happens under a gratuity payment the employer will make certain payment to the employee based on a formula for example the formula could be that for every completed year of service 15 days of salary is paid by the employer to the employee now say for example an employee has worked in an organization for 10 years so how much will be the benefit that will be paid 
15 by 30, I am assuming you know 30 days month, not 26 period, okay, 15 by 30 multiplied by 10 years, so basically 5 months of salary multiplied by the last drawn monthly salary, right, that is the benefit which will be paid by the employer to the employee. Now, the employer knew that this employee will resign after 10 years. For example, he made that estimate. So, for that, he started making some investments right from day one, okay. Right from day one, he started keeping some amount aside and started investing them. Now, and, and what did he think at the end of 10 years when this employee resigns, I'll take this amount and I'll make the payment to the employee. Now, say for example, based on the calculations, right, the amount payable to the employee works out to be 10 lakhs and the amount of investments in hand with the employer is only 9 lakhs. Now, can the employer say that I will make only payment of 9 lakh because that is the amount I have set aside? He cannot say that because he is liable to pay the benefit to the employee based on the formula. So, that 10 lakhs has to be paid to the employee, okay. The employer cannot escape from his liability. So, irrespective of what happens on the investment side, the employer cannot escape from the liability. You, they will have to make the payment as per the benefit formula. That is called a defined benefit plan. What is a defined benefit plan? It is a plan in which the benefit is defined. The contribution is not defined. The benefit is defined. Who will bear the risk of actual assumption? Let us say the salary increases significantly. Who will bear that risk? The employer will bear that risk. Let us say the investments do not face the return. Who will bear the risk? The employer will bear the risk. The employee will say, based on this formula, this is the amount I have to receive. Please pay that amount. Okay. That is what is a defined benefit plan. Under contribution, once the contribution is made by the employer, employer does not care. Employer is not bothered about actual risk, investment risk and all of those things. All those are borne by the employee, right? So this is the broad understanding of defined contribution plan and a defined benefit plan. So let us broadly summarize the discussions we had for a defined contribution plan and defined benefit plan. As far as a defined contribution plan is concerned, what is defined? The contribution to be made by the employer is defined. Under defined benefit, what is defined? The benefit that the employee will get, that is what is defined. Now, under a defined contribution plan, what will be the benefit that will be received by the employee? It will be the contribution plus the return on investment. That is what will be received by the employee. Okay. Under the benefit plans, what is the benefit that the employee will receive? They will receive the benefit as decided by the formula. Now, coming to the risk aspect, there are two kinds of risk. One, Benefit is less than expected, which we generally call as an actual risk or the assets may not be sufficient to make the payment to the employee. That is the investment risk or the asset risk side. Now, who bears this risk in case of a contribution plan? The employer does not bear the risk. The ultimate risk, the actual risk falls on the employee. Even the investment risk, let us say the fund doesn't have money, that also falls on the employee. Whereas, if it is a defined benefit plan, the actual risk and the investment risk are borne by the employer himself. So, there is a possibility that the employer may have a higher obligation than expected. Whereas, in case of a contribution plan, there is no increase in obligation, right? Even if the fund doesn't have money to pay, employer does not have any responsibility to make good the shortfall, right? So, this is a broad understanding between a defined contribution plan and a defined benefit plan.